Hi, uh, some people have asked me to make some videos on how to use Photoshop. So here we go. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm going to show you some tools in Photoshop. Uh, these tools are very similar to any of the tools in any of the Adobe products. Photoshop and Illustrator, Lightroom, my well, Lightroom is slightly different, um, but InDesign, Dreamweaver, After Effects, most of them will have a toolbar similar to this. Now we'll start with the top of the toolbar over here. You have the Marquee tool, which is for making selections of areas. So, let me bring down here, you can just select an area of an image. Then if you want to select more of the image, add to the selection, you can hit down the shift key, hold down the shift key, and that will add to your selection. Do some more of that, and the next bit. Then let's say you don't want some of that, you can subtract some of the selection. So hold down the Alt key, and that will take away from the selection area. So Shift adds, Alt takes away. Then you can also, if you want to make a circular selection, you can go back up to the marquee tool, hold down for a couple of seconds, and you get the ellipse marquee tool. You just deselect the selection. So we want to make a circular selection of the Photoshop logo. So if you go to the center of the logo, hold down the Shift and Alt key, this will make a perfect scaling circle. From the center, there we go. Then, if you want to make a selection or move the move tool, you can select with your marquee tool. The quick key for the marquee tool is M. So if you have it set to the marquee square tool, you can go M in the shortcut, make your selection, and then either go up here to move, or as you can see, there's a quick key V. So hit V, and you can move that object around. If you're not happy with where it's gone, you can command Z like all other programs or control Z to bring it back to where it was and control D will deselect. Next here we have the lasso tool. It's like a paint drawing tool for making selections. So again the V tool moves so you can move certain areas of an image. Control Z Control D to deselect. Then there is other selection tools hidden in here as well. Any of the tools with the little arrow has more options. This is a polygon and um, so we're drawing more straight lines. If you hold the shift key, it'll keep it to a perfect straight line. Again, if you hold shift again, you can add. Add points. And then hit enter, and that will complete or finish the selection. You can move that around with the arrow keys. Or you can go back to the marquee tool, selection tool, 
and take away part of the selection with the Alt key held down. Then B, and you can move that around as well. The next tool here is the Paint Push Selection Tool, Quick Selection Tool. You can select areas of color quickly. If you wanted to select more or less of the image, you can deselect that, zoom in a little bit. Let's say we want to select all of the blue area. You can go paintbrush selection. It works like a paintbrush, so you can scale up and down the size of the brush. Select the blue area. And we want to add this bit here. Select that. Want to make it a bit smaller? We can use the square bracket keys. The right square bracket makes it bigger. The left square bracket makes it smaller. So that's actually already selected the S as well. We don't want it to select the S. So I can hit Alt and deselect. And that's done a pretty good job there. So I'm just going to duplicate the blue area onto a new layer to show you that it's done. So let's Command J would be copy onto a new layer where you can do Control C, Control V. Now I'll just hide the bottom layer. You can see it's just copied the blue section of the Photoshop logo there. So I'm going to delete that there. Next one down is a crop tool. So you can, up at the top of the screen, there are preset crops that you can use, where you can type in the measurements you want. And say, two inches by two inches and then just move across to where I want to crop if you hold down the spacebar key you can move your artboard you hold inside and move, and move the artwork. So I just want to crop the Photoshop logo. So I'm bringing that down there, and then there. And then double click, and that crops your image. Right there. Now, if you want to undo your crop, you can click crop again and resize your crop area. And uh, if this doesn't work for you, you may have delete crop area selected. So if I have that selected, the other area before the crop will have been deleted. I put that to five inches. Reverse size. So this is for reversing portrait to landscape. So now if I crop that, you can see that the other part of the image is gone. But if I go back into crop, it's still there. Or if you have this selected, new crop. When you crop again, it does not bring back the rest of the image. So, I'll just hit Command Z to undo. Both edits, step back, and that will bring back the rest of the image. Or you can go to History, which is this little arrow here. And then you can go back to before it cropped us. Okay, I'm going to zoom, which is the Z tool. Z is the quick key. And then Command Zero. Command Zero. Or oh, full screen. Next tool down, we have 
I was a crop tool, the color selection tool, color picker, eye dropper. So you can pick your colors. You can color sample to give you the information of the colors. You can measure lengths. Again, if you hold shift and keep the line straight, you can find out the length of an item. And you can notes. You can add notes. Never use the option very. Really. Next down, clone stop. So if you wanted to clone, you can basically clone out areas. Of an image, a little bit of here, just to show you. A bit of dirt here in the foreground, you can clone some of that out. There you go, simple on the top. Basically, samples the area color around and fills it in. Sometimes it doesn't work. You can zoom in and fix that up. J is the shortcut for the clone stamp. You're doing a lot of photo retouching, you might need that. Z, command zero, zoom back out. And there are a few different cleaning options here. We've got healing brush, which works like a paintbrush as well. So you can either manually make it bigger and smaller. But with the healing brush, you have to select an area to. You must click to define the source area. So you hold down the Alt key, select a sample area. And then just clone it. You can also make it bigger and smaller with the square brackets. Right bracket, left bracket for bigger and smaller. You can take out that shine that was on that this little head there. And then you can also sample this area here. Get some more dust here. And the next tool now is the patch tail. So if you want to get rid of a large area, you might be able to get rid of this guy here. And just sample that area. You want to get rid of this. You drag down to an area that's really clean there. And that'll sample that and try and fix it up. It's done a pretty good job. And again. One more time, just fix something that's down here. Okay. Obviously, the better quality the photo, the better the more accurate this will be able to do this. And I think this was just taken on an iPhone, so nothing special about the image. And now, next to them, and the red light too, I've never used content awareness, I don't really use that either. The brush tool, if you're painting or drawing. They're quite good, and um, a lot of these tools, paint brushes and that, are a lot better if you have a tablet, and um, like a Wacom tablet or maybe an Apple tablet or something. And you can use the pressure, which will then 
any different strengths and thicknesses of the brush. You can download brushes online or there's some set brushes come with Photoshop and some of them may not be presets. You can find them on different places online anyway, that's where they are there. Top of the screen. All the option tools will have different um, options at the top of the screen. Alignment. Um, feather. If you want to put a feather on the marquee tool. Let's say you don't want a hard square edge. Let's say you want to copy this clip. Command C, Command B. And copy them across here. Two little ghosts. And even go into the next tools. And use the paintbrush, the clone stamp. I'll actually do pretty much the same as what I did there. So you can copy an area. So let's make, hold down your alt, copy him. There you go. You get a little ghost on you. And then copy it again. You need a selection area smaller. Hold down the alt key to select. And you can get another eye there. And then you can, you can just play around with the, the different tools. Just going to do that there. Okay, and um, history brush. So if you wanted to undo something, like let's say we want to bring this guy back, could select on um, this is the history, so this is the timeline basically of what we have done. Uh, it only goes back, I think, 30 or 40 steps, but you can go back to the original. So we are here at the minute. Let's say I want to bring him back, and we know he's roughly here. You can go to the history brush, make it slightly bigger, and just brush him back in there. Don't use this tool very often, but it can be handy at times. There you go. This is the history brush tool. You can also do it the opposite way. And if you are working, you could go forward in time or back in time, depending on what way you want to use that. And the eraser tool, you had copied this guy here. It's too big right here. Three, four, the move tool. Move them around. Let's say we use the razor tool. The razor tool again works like the paintbrushes. And square brackets, white and left, will make bigger and smaller. Next tool is the paint bucket. So we would fill the background there if we want with white or gray. So Make sure it's selected on the foreground color. You get something looking funny like this. It means you've got a pattern. <laughs> Preset patterns aren't great in Photoshop, so you can make your own patterns and download textures as pattern backgrounds. And depends on what you're working on. You can make kind of metallic ones or. Basically, this is just a, a metal pattern stitched across. Let's remove that. So, again, fill in the color. It's the color, or you can pick from the image itself if you want. And then just fill that in there. Oh, I've done exactly what I was talking about. Set it to foreground color. Fill, and there you go. Back to the eraser, which is Command E, and move out some more of this shot. A much better way of doing that is to make 
a layer mask. So if you come to the layers panel, down at the very bottom, is this thing here called add layer mask. And if you go to the paintbrush, or you can hit B for paintbrush, zoom in a bit closer, and B, then black hides and white shows. So if you black across, just going to bring your opacity of that brush up to 100%. So just to show you, black will hide. And X swaps these colors. So X, X, black hides and white reveals. So you can then go and paint around and get quite close in there. Hiding the background. I actually find if you want to do that type of thing, it can be a lot easier. It's kind of like doing a green screen. So it can be a lot easier if you put a, in a background layer that looks like a green screen. So if you select a very bright, bright green, it's not going to be in your image. Fill that background. You can actually see a lot easier. Go back to your layer mask there. The brush. You can see a lot easier where colors are. This doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a, a sample. And to move around like this, I'm pressing the space bar, which brings up the little hand. So I'm actually on the two layers there, this tool here, the hand, which moves around the artboard. So back to bush, which is the B. It's very handy to know the short keys. And you can download from the web a list of all the short keys. Or if you just hover over them, you'll actually say H for hand. Also works with the space bar. And B for brush. J will bring up the patch tools, the different tools. Uh, it will bring whichever one's selected, so whichever one you're using last. So B for brush. Take it up there. There you go. Seven back out. Nine zero. Here we have a little ghost. And if you duplicate him, Command J will copy the layer. Just notice that there's actually more out there now. So I'm just going to get rid of a little bit more of that. Okay, oh, just made a mistake there. See in here, you can see that I've actually painted green on it. I haven't actually deleted it, that's because I clicked on this part, not the layer mask. So we go to history, come back up, go across to the layer mask. See, I haven't painted now, but I've come back. Back to black and white, because we want that for making the mask and just paint in there and you can see it's all gone and if I duplicate this layer you can either drag the layer down to new layer and then copy it or you can just hit command J will duplicate the layer and use V for move and I'm going to use edit Transform, Scale, or Skew, or Distort, whichever one you want, which is actually the shortcut for that is Command T. If you hold down the Shift key, it'll automatically scale perspectively. Then what you can do is you can right click, that will give you the other options, the Skew, Scale, Warp, Distort. I'm going to flip this 
to make them look like he's coming in from the other side, so flip her horizontally. Scale them out a bit more. There you go, I'm going to hide our green screen. Okay. Now let's just copy this other guy here. So if we go L for our lasso tool, or you can select whichever one you want. We might try and use this guy here. We're selecting. Select the outside area. And what you can do is select all of this because it's an easier color to select. Select inverse, which will actually then bring you onto him. And I'm going to command J or control C, control V. Copy him onto a new layer. Bring back in the color background. And we can move him around. Maybe make him a bit bigger or smaller. And then also in the fill tool, you have a gradient tool. So it picks a foreground to background color. So what you might want to do is go gray and gray to cream, and cream white color. Above the green, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to get a gradient. I'm going to pick, yeah, I'm going to leave my gradient. These are different gradient options here when you drop down. You go from about the center point or a little less, maybe that is the back of his feet. I'm going to hold down the mouse button and the shift button and drag all the way down and then let go. And that's not really what I wanted, so command Z. Go from the bottom up. A bit better, but not really what I wanted. And if I swap it around, you can hit X to swap the colors. Again. Okay, what I'm going to do is put it down like that. And I'm going to select this area. And I'm going to transform. So Control A to select all. Control T to transform. Rotate around. And Shift so it does it equally. Not down. So it's Control T to transform again. Bring it down. Down to about there. That's kind of what I wanted the gradient tool to do. And the gradient from there down. And I want to go L for no M for my marquee tool. I want to go to the ellipse marquee tool. I'm going to go look to the center of the image. Can control A, control T, that will show you the center. And just hit enter, we'll deselect. Control D, deselect. You, I'm still on the ellipse marquee tool. So if I hit shift and alt, hold down the two keys and the mouse button, and that will bring out an ellipse from the center. And let go. And I can go select a feather of maybe 80 pixels. Now I want, I only want to show this area here. So I can go to the mask tool. Select the mask. And there we have masked out the area. And then I think what I'm going to do is reduce the brightness of that. So in layer styles, at the minute it's set to normal. I'm going to bring it down to 
Let's try what multiply does. Yeah, that's kind of nice. The top ones here darken. The second layer here, they lighten the image. So here's a bright color. And these darken. Overlay. All of these do different different things to the image. And then the hue, saturation, color. So I'm just going to go back up to multiply to make it darker. Or darker to make it darker. No, I prefer multiply. It gives it a nicer color. It's a bit dark, so I'm going to... Opacity, I'm going to drop the opacity down. So about 50%. Kind of like how that looks. And then I'm going to copy this there. Duplicate that. I'm going to unlink, unlink these brackets. Which means I can edit this side of the image, the color. Control T. Now look, then hit enter to deselect, and I'll relink the brackets so the mask is still attached. And then I'm going to fade that in, let's say 20%, with a nice, nice two tone effect. And maybe then I will pick a different color for the background. So what I can do is back to selection and pick a color so you can go up to the eyedropper or hit the eye key and then select the color maybe that color might be nice select a new layer F is for Fill if you have it selected. It didn't work, so I'm just going to go and change it in this version of Photoshop. So the G is the paint bucket or the gradient. So I want the paint bucket. Paint bucket. I'm going to fill the background there. I didn't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Their mask. Drag right down and do that. And shift drag right down and copy this. It also inverted it. So if that doesn't work for you, you can hit Command I to invert black to white, white to black. So here we have two tone on top of that. I just select them, move them around, move them more in the center, control T, move them in the ghosts, control Z, you hit V and you select an item and it doesn't pick it, you need to run the wrong layer. You want to find the ghost layer and the second ghost layer. Move him in a bit and pick him this first one. V, no, move him down. Move him in there. There we go. So that's and as far as the fill tool, the smudge tool, finger tool. Let's go back to our. Original image. So background there. Like that. So the finger tail or the smudge tail, blur tail, and uh, blur basically blurs the image. So if you bring that up, you can blur the image. It works slowly. I'm going to see before and after. And like that. Get that layer again. The smudge tool. And you can do good effects if you want to do kind of stretching images or messing around with images. 
Some people use it for photo shopping and images of people and stuff as well. So you can just distort different images, different features. Again, square brackets for plus and minus. Maybe we want to just shark them. And ghost. So you can kind of move around and mess around with that. And so that's the smudge tool. The sharpen tool. We I've never used the sharpen tool. I'm sure it's going to be the opposite to smudge tool. Let's see what this does. You can't really notice what it's doing there, but you can see it is sharpening the edge between the black and the white. I'm getting a very strong line between the two of them. Yeah, I'm just going to delete that. Duplicate that layer. Command J. Zoom back out. Command zero. Okay, so it's a smudge. And this is a sponge tool. It can be used for getting rid of red eye. There's no red eye in this image. So I'm just going to desaturate the red here just to show you, actually desaturate the whole ghost here just to show you what it does. It basically takes out the color by going to hue and saturation on the image and just whitens out, takes out the color of the image slowly, so there we go, do it on the you can see it works quite slowly so, as the different options up there. So, okay, I'm just going to delete this. Duplicate the background image. Next one down. The dodge and burn tools. And these would have been used in the dark room for brightening and darkening, darkening photographs. So, basically, dodging the light and burning the light. Not great tools to be using. Um, there's a lot easier ways of doing this. I wouldn't use them a lot. So again, darkening down. Areas of images. As you can see, it kind of looks like it's lost detail and burns some of the image there. So, uh, Delete that. And next tool down, the pen tool for drawing shapes and things like that. I don't tend to use that in Photoshop. I use Photoshop for editing photos and painting. But if I wanted to do any drawing or text or shapes, I'd go into Illustrator. And I find a much easier program for drawing shapes. And other things you can do here. And I'll just go to some quick color adjustments. So the first one people will do generally is check the levels on an image. So it's like the histogram you'll see on the back of your camera. So you can go image adjust levels or you can just hit command L. And that will bring up the levels panel. If you hold down the Alt key, you can bring in this is the white point, and this is the black point. You can bring in the white point, or if you hold down the Alt, you can see if there's any of the image burnt out. You can see over here there's some white burnt out there. Go to the black point, check there. Then we have to bring them in just to the edge of each. Get a good dark and a good light, a good contrast in the image. 
you can also go down through the channels come into the red channel and then in there so you see some black the white's okay green green channel and to see a little black and blue channel so you see the black and the white because that hasn't used them to the edge. And that's kind of fixed up the color a bit there. So I'm just show you before and after. It gives a greater contrast in the image and some better color here. And also go back to levels. So Command L or Image Adjust Levels and select the midpoint or the black point. Now I have a color cube here, but you could select this guy here as your gray point, your white point. I'm going to select the, the midpoint, the gray point. And just pick a, what I think might be gray, or should be gray. So changing it there. And let's try that again. Levels, midpoint. Go so on the white, you can see it changing in gray, see it neutralize the image. And if I do something silly like that, it's going to mess up the colors. A kind of twilight effect going on now, so that neutralizes the image for you. You can pick your black point correction, gray point, and this one. This here is for your specular highlights or your pure white. You can see the different different effects that have on the image. There a little bit. And you can also make the image more punchy and or brighter, darker by image adjust curves. A lot of people go for a kind of S curve. A great contrast. I'm just going to hit Alt and reset that. I just want to brighten the image a little bit. And uh, I have it set to incremental, so the center point is 50 50. And uh, if that's not set on your machine, it could be down here. It could be on this option. And um, bar and light. So I like pigment and uh, this grid here. So I'm going to bring that down to about 40 and 40, 50. Only a slight adjustment, but it brightens up a fair bit. And then I'm going to do some color adjustments. So if I go down to the bottom of my Nerys panel, there's selective color options. So I'm just going to go to the reds. Uh, what colors make up red? You've got magenta, so I want 100% magenta and yellow. And you've got yellows, it's just the yellow. Greens, yellow, and cyan. Cyan is 100% cyan. Blues would be cyan, and there's actually a bit of magenta in there, so I'll bring that up as well. And magenta, bring that up to 100%. There we have it. Just hide that away. As you can see, the colors are very punchy and very bright, but that's not what we want it to look like. So I'm going to go up to layer styles, go down and change that to color, and then I want to bring that down a bit, so probably about 50%. So now if I select the eye here, we'll hide the layer as I have done on the rest of the layers. So you can see it, it warms up the image and gives it a nicer color. This will work a lot better on photos of people and things like fruit or that as well. Yeah, whatever you're photographing, that'll increase the color contrast and density of the image. I'll we'll just give you an example of before and after. I'm just going to merge these two layers, which is Command E, or you can go Merge Down. Or merge layers and it'll be the same. So that's our after photo. 
as before. So you can see we've taken out a yellow hue, probably from the tungsten lights. Uh, and we've added a bit more contrast and that to the image. So that's um, a lot of the tools in Photoshop. Um, as I say, the rectangular tool, the text tool, you can use them in Photoshop, but I tend to um, I tend to use text and that in Illustrator instead because Illustrator is a vector based. You can change, you can make vectors any size, print it out any size, so it's a lot better. Ah, the layer is hidden because it's at the bottom there. But, um, yeah, so with the text, you've got your fonts. And um, this there, font size 60, let's make that one 20. Got your colors, change your colors. Also, yeah, you can pick your colors by the eyedropper. Make sure you have the color selected, one dropper. And if another way of finding more options be over here on the side, you have characters. You can't find it there. All your tools are hidden away in the window. And then you have all your tools here. So characters. Let's bring that out and show you. So you've got your sizes, your fonts. A small preview of the font. And then line height. The distance between the words in height and width. And the color. Font style, like all caps, small caps. And bold, italic. And if you want some of the letters raised, you can change that here. Um, so you can do all of these type of things in Illustrator as well. As I say, I use Illustrator more for text. I just find it a lot easier to use. So that's about it for the going through the tools. The zoom tool I kind of overlooked. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, Alt to zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. And hand, move around the image. And here's zoom in in a certain area. You can either press the H key for hand, or if you want the space bar, I think it's a lot easier for moving around. And again, the paintbrush is B. So if I want to fix this little bit of the value there, go to B, and then the paintbrush size, select the eye color, go to B, and that there. Can't see that because all of these lines are invisible. Let's go down here. Select that color B. And that there. That was well and fix it up a bit more. So I am healing bush brush the J. I spot healing bush. And then get a bit smaller. Just turn that up there. So he's got some kind of a glue or something on him here. So he's going to go clone stamp this out. So S, clone stamp. Select your area with Alt. And keep picking a new area. So it's just holding Alt, tapping the new area, and painting. So this kind of a scratch here, this could be maybe a blemish uh, on a photograph, so J, 
you don't have to select your area then. And across, that's with the spot healing. Spot healing bush tail. And something funny on this cape here. I might try like a spot healing on that. Didn't work. Control Z. And use the clone stamp. S. Alt. There you go, that's better. Alt again to select the color area. Clean them up a bit. Same on this side. Oh, let's pick the area. No. Okay, so that's just a quick example of how to use the different tools in Photoshop. We went on for a lot longer than I thought. But um, thanks for watching. My name is Mark, and uh, if you have any questions or ideas for further videos, uh, just leave a comment below. Okay, thanks very much.